Yes, so we are very honored. We actually have two presentations tonight, so we will begin uh, our presentations with um, Mr. Paul Ebert Jr. of Ebert Associates. So thank you very much for coming out. Let's please give him a round of applause. My name's uh, Pete Ebert, my father and uh, my brother-in-law, and I've had this property for many years. We actually uh, lent uh, an elderly woman uh, some money, and uh, she needed it for medical reasons. We ended up uh, purchasing the property from her uh, almost going on 10 years ago. The property was originally two homes that were uh, uh, vacated and dilapidated uh, to the point where the county wanted us to tear them down. So we tore them down. The, the property was zoned agricultural. And, uh, so we're kind of sandwiched between two institutional uses. So we think a child care facility is, is a uh, a fair reflection of what is uh, in front of us and what's behind us. It is in the middle of uh, the uh, uh, Dale City, uh, the back end of the Dale City, uh, newer sections uh, that were constructed, like I said, in the last 10 to 15 years, uh, single family development uh, to the rear as well. Um, if you turn to page three, you can see where the proposed daycare site is going to be located. Uh, and again, it gives you an aerial, you can see the big uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church across the street from us. It is at the intersection of Hoadley Road and Webster's Way. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you for having me. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This don't, it don't happen all every every day. We have a senator that uh, that we know very well. Did a lot of stuff for our community, and we're very proud of him. And we're going to have him be introduced by our. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a real honor and a privilege. So um, I'm going to introduce him as a neighbor, as a Garfield High School graduate, as a father, as a firefighter in our community, as an active community member, as a friend to Dale City, and as our Virginia senator. I would love to introduce Mr. Jeremy McPyatt. Thank you so much. It's such a big Is it pretty good? Well, um, as, as she did introduce, I, I've had a number of roles here being with this group and presenting over the past, and it's my honor to, to serve as your state senator now. Uh, but I'm going to jump back to a previous role since we just had our daily savings time and remind everyone to change your batteries. So I, you know, taking the fire helmet off occasionally, but it always comes back uh, to remind people. So take that opportunity to uh, make sure we do it since so we just passed that. I know everyone's still adjusting to the time schedule. So, um, well, a, a couple of things I wanted to, to talk about and, and update uh, you about since session in January. Uh, there have been a couple things I want to talk about the budget. Uh, first off, and where we stand, um, <coughs> some of the bills that passed this past year, uh, and then third, some of the reforms that are going on in education, and which uh, some of the things I you know talked about last year during the campaign. So, jumping back first off on uh, the budget, uh, we did pass a balanced budget as we do in Virginia, uh, over 100 billion dollars. Uh, there were some revenue projections that came out. Um, this past summer after the fiscal year closed that said revenues are off for about 1.2 billion dollars that did impact the teacher pay raise so that was one of the provisions that was passed so next week I'm meeting uh, the Senate finances meeting um, in Blacksburg for two days we'll get updated revenue pictures at that point um, for our consideration to come this January so this January is going to be our short session because we only meet one time during the year. So the, earlier this year was January to February, it's our 60 day session. And we did 3,300 bills in 60 days. So we do what US Congress does, well, more than they do in a year in 60 days. Uh, this year is the 45 day session. And so what we'll do much the same in terms of budget revisions, as well as any bills that are to be considered or bills that will continue from this year come January. So it is a very busy time of year. <coughs> And so I appreciate your patience because if you call or write, we, we try to be very responsive. Uh, but it's normally a warning and, 
a committee assignment, then on the floor for floor votes, then in, into another committee assignment during the afternoon, and then following up on emails and calls uh, late into the night. Uh, a few things that have happened that I was really uh, proud to be a part of this year. Uh, one of which is high school redesign, um, which we passed this year. What it does is it provides a framework for our State Board of Education to allow our youth who are not necessarily going to go to a four-year college to start to get actual certification and training while they're in school, in high school, and for that credit to count towards their high school graduation. So in their junior and senior year is the basic idea. They can get certification, whether it's plumbing, electrical work, other technical fields, IT, and those credits get applied to their graduation. And so it's really looking at the outcomes in our education system. If the outcomes we want employable youth who are energized and excited about their future, then that's a huge policy change that we've undertaken. A couple, the, the Board of Education are both re, uh, looking through revisions right now that they're going to submit this fall to the Federal Department of Education because they also have to, at the same time, comply with the new ESA federal uh, legislation, which is Every Student Succeeds Act. So they have two things that they're trying to undertake right now. They were just out here in, in Manassas and Prince William for a public hearing on it several months ago. We had about 100, 150 people. The uh, public hearing lasted for, I don't know, three, four hours, w well into the evening, to gather feedback, which is important, whether it's the, our need for school nurses, whether it's need for increased funding for our classrooms, whether it's um, counselors to um, look at our, our mental health process for, for our kids and suicide prevention. There are really so many needs that are out there that were addressed and uh, I talked to Dr. Kennedy uh, who is the, the president of the Board of Education he really heard he really heard a lot of that feedback and they've taken that to heart the the other major thing that we're working on um, I serve also on this the state's uh, SOL innovation committee um, SOL is standard of learning that is the test if you actually you probably saw some work I'm still working on trying to uh, figure out funding to improve our corner road commuter lot uh, with security, whether it's license plate readers or temporary cameras, you probably saw them up there because I, after we had that rash of thefts come this spring, I sat VDOT down, I sat our, our state police down, and our local police down. I said, look, this is not acceptable. We're coming home after a long day of commute and finding your car up on blocks, no tires, windows busted out, is not acceptable. Um, so that's where you saw the next week, you saw the, the temporary cameras uh, as well as the license plate readers I just heard yesterday they made an arrest of a gentleman in Loudoun because this is a regional ring. They did arrest one individual uh, that they suspect has been hitting multiple areas in the region. But it's not just not one. We know we, we arrested several individuals about two months ago. Uh, we arrested this gentleman uh, I think two days ago. Uh, but we want to make sure to stay vigilant and so I'm looking at uh, more permanent solutions to make sure we have some deterrence and active patrols and working with um, Supervisor Jenkins and, and Prince William here. So, so I think Senator, Senator in Virginia. Oh, I, I said I had a big picture philosophical question, so I'm asking about partisan politics at the um, Senate level in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Is it as divided and what sure. do you think we can do about building mm -hmm. bridges and doing something about this huge massive divide that we have? Sure. Well, my, my experience in the Senate, it is, it is not a massive divide. Uh, there are 40 members of the Senate. Um, I have developed relationships with folks across the aisle this year. It's based on people. I mean, it's a lot harder to sit there and poke people in the eye when you, you sit down and talk to them as a person. And I think just sitting down and talking and figuring out, we, we disagree on lots of different issues. But a lot of them you can come back and find some common areas like fostering futures, identifying an at-risk youth population saying, wait a second, you know, I, I know you care about this, and I, I know, you know, there's some combination here, and we've got some good data that says that our, our youth in this population are, are getting in trouble, can we move this forward? Um, it, it really is about, yeah, I don't agree with a lot, and sometimes they get on four speeches and they get a little off on some tangents. Um, but you know they're also representing their district, which is very different than this district and where we live. And so I mean, I always have to represent, uh, respect, you know, that they are representing their district, and people have sent them there to represent. Uh, and so 
it's just finding that opportunity is, is connecting its people um, and, and as a person, uh, whether it's you know, Jill Vogel from Fauquier County, she's on the other side. You know, we worked together on, on several things this year. Um, it's, you know, it, it happens, but it, it, it takes you just treating each other as people and you can, you can go a lot further that way. And it wasn't my job, nor would it help my district if I went down there as a freshman and go poking people in the eye. Mm -hmm. All right, I would have gotten nothing passed. I wouldn't have gotten committee assignments. I wouldn't have gotten on the SOL Innovation Committee because they knew I was passionate about it because I got kids in school. And I wouldn't be able to, to talk about these things because they would have shut me out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on also a rules subcommittee, which is usually, it's not heard of, and nor am I a member of rules, but they put me on a subcommittee to work on things because they know I'm going to you know, bring an approach that's not there to jab people. And that <clears throat> it's something that I value. Is, and one of my goals this year was, you know, help my district by help building relationships. And that it takes working across the aisle to do that. It's building relationships as people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hopefully we can do that.